All right, so I was able to get the new bearings pressed on today at the shop. Um, so I'm just waiting on my neighbor to come over. This, uh, I found it to be easiest if you have another person, another, another set of hands to help hold the pinion in while you drive the pinion bearing on the pinion. Because uh, it's also a press fit right here. It, it doesn't require a press or anything, but you have to use a drift or a punch and a hammer. See it? You have to drive it onto this shoulder here. It's probably like a one thousandth, if that, but just enough where it doesn't slide on. So, have somebody else hold this up in the housing, and then you come around from the other side, punch this bearing down onto the shoulder up against the crush sleeve, and then uh, you put your pinion seal in. Slide the yoke on, and then proceed to crushing the crush collar. Now, I always grease my pinion bearings. I don't grease the side bearings. I suppose it wouldn't hurt, but you, you may have to pull the carrier out several times to get the backlash right. So I don't, I don't bother with greasing side bearings. Um, plus, they're they're sitting in oil anyways. As to where the pinion bearings, the oil has to be thrown over the top. I guess they kind of sit in it, but they're not fully submerged. But uh, I also put a little bit of grease on the pinion nut or on some rear ends. They don't have a flange nut like this. They have a washer. I put a little grease on the washer. It helps with crushing the crush collar. And this seal came with grease in it. Some seals don't, so always make sure you grease the seal as well. But uh, like I said, we're just waiting on the neighbor to uh, come over and see if he's available. Watch your eyes. Push it up hard. Does it feel like it's in there? It's not really. That's all the way up? That's all the way. Let me give it one more tap ski. Yep. All right. So you have to hold it for a second. you see this groove mm -hmm. that's where the seal ate into it but Ford has this little oil flinger here that keeps the oil from banging on the seal if it was a Chevrolet we'd have to uh, we'd have to either put a speedy sleeve on the pinion yoke or we'd have to replace the yoke altogether Go, huh? Let me tap that down. get it from there all right to crush the crush collar and get the correct preload in between the bearings what I do is you can either take a, a piece of angle iron and drill some holes in it and put the angle iron on it and put the bolts through it so you can hold that pancake flange if you have like a u-joint uh, like a, a saddle style you can use like a pipe wrench or sometimes you can just grip it with your hand but you can't really grab this and hold it still so what I did this time was I just ran two bolts in it and crossed it with my pry bar and I hit it with the impact gun and uh, you just beat on it until there's no play in between the bearings anymore and it's got a you know a little bit of resistance um, I believe there's a actual preload like a torque spec almost but this is the way I've done hundreds of them you know you just don't want it too tight you know it's got to be able to move freely but with no play in between the bearings and uh, there's several different ways you can do it you know with those bolts 
You can rig it up and use like a breaker bar if your impact gun isn't strong enough or you have a small air compressor. But now that that's done, we can set the carrier in it and start setting the backlash. All right, so we're gonna set this uh, carrier down in here. You gotta be careful you don't pinch your fingers off. And uh, we're gonna try the fact, or uh, not factory, but the shims that were in it before. It was. It was real loose, the carrier was real loose before. But all bearings change, might be a thousandths, might be two thousandths different, so it might be tight this time. And you might get away with one shot, although it doesn't normally happen like that. I have had it happen before though. Yeah. See how it just falls right in? There's no resistance. I can just take it right back out. So. All right. So we got a little shim kit with this here. So I'm gonna add one to this side because this is the side that pushes it away. That gives you your backlash. It opens it up. This side basically just holds the pressure, but if you don't have enough backlash, you'd add to this side, you'd have to take away from this side, you move the ring gear away from the pinion, it increases your backlash. Um, but the first thing you gotta do is, it get, is get it tight in there, and then you have two sets of shims, and then you can move them from side to side. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add a small one of this, maybe five thousandths, and uh, see what we have. All right, so the shim kit that was supplied, it doesn't have anything smaller than a 10. Ten. No threes, no fives, just tens. So that makes it a lot more difficult to set up accurately. It's probably why it was five. They probably had a similar shim kit for this one, but they sell better shim kits that have several threes and fives in the pack and they actually have a shoulder too so that when you try to tap them in like this this style here it'll want to separate you know and then while you're trying to tap it in there drive it down in the housing they'll bend over and stuff and they're just a pain but um like i said that's what we have so we'll see if we can get it down in there Yeah, so you can't pull it out. You have to use a pry bar to get it out. So that's what you want. And then uh, you check it. Remember, we're looking for five, five to six. Definitely not four. About time for a new magnetic base dial indicator. I tell you that. Let's build a mini rear end. Oh yeah, massive gap. So we got about 15 thousandths. So what I'll do is I'll move one of these small shims over to this side, push it over, but keeping the same preload. But you always want to check it in multiple spots. So just roll it around. Fifteen, sixteen. So we need to move about ten thousandths. Once you get that 
broke loose, you can just pull it up, move your shim kits out. It's important to keep them separated from side to side so you don't mix them up. So these are definitely at least tens. A thirteen. I'll run that and see what the other small one is. Probably the same. Fourteen. So we'll run that first one on this side. And then put this one back in. got nothing zero so what I have to do is I have to use my calipers on this original shim plus the two little shims and see how thick it is versus this side and then I have to use this these uh, assortment of shims down here to build something that was less than the 13 thousandths I moved so whatever this is right here, say it's 200 thousandths, you know, I'll just make it 197 thousandths and try that. And I'll move the extra three back to this side to keep the same carrier preload. So I normally keep a couple bearing kits in stock, a couple shim kits. So I'll see if I can't just rob like a three or five out of here. I'm just not gonna be able to get it exactly where I want it with the proper preload. So. DT shim kits, they're the best. That's a six. We'll try that one on this side. See if that tightens it up. Well, actually, opens the backlash up, but it'll tighten the carrier up a little bit more too. Like I said, I measured out what this side was, moved a couple thousands from this side, I just added six to that side, so that should move it over and give me some backlash. there's any there it's not enough so just have to keep moving shims and this is the process of setting the backlash up and once your preload's good you can take it away from this side put it here opens the backlash if it's too wide move it from here to this side closes the backlash up you know it's a trial and error type thing because even though it may be a six thousand shim that doesn't always relate to moving the backlash six thousandths. It may move it none, it may move it two. So 
you know, this is the process of you just have to keep moving it until you get it where you want it. All right, so I got the right combination. I got the five thousandths I was looking for. Spinning around, checking in a couple different spots, but uh, you always want to run your caps on. Remember, you spike them so they go back on the right side. I don't really know how much difference that does make, but you know, it's just like main caps in an engine. You know, you can't go swapping main caps in an engine. You tear your bearings up. So, although these aren't the same type of bearings, I assume it adds stress. So. And I do torque the main caps, but for right now, just checking it purposes, I just run them down. Helps if you put it on tighten. And this sometimes changes the backlash too. So. Between five and six. It's nice how much better it rolls when everything's nice and tight. It's almost hard to get a backlash reading because it so smooth now. Well, that's back where it was. That's what we wanted. grab my torque wrench torque these down properly I believe it's 60 or 65 I'll have to check real quick and uh, torque these down I'll throw some paint on it check the pattern I mean there's really anything we can do about it because we didn't change the pinion depth shim and we set the backlash back where it was but you know it doesn't hurt to run a pattern see what it looks like All right, so I threw some paint on the gear you only need to paint three teeth, you know, you ain't, you ain't got to go painting 27 teeth or nothing like that. And you can use it sparingly. And uh, this is Yukon's. Uh, I run a lot of Yukon bearing kits, and this comes with their bearing kits. And uh, it has this little chart you can go off of, and it says Ford 8.8, .8, ring gear bolts, and main cap bolts, 60. So, go on and get this set up, and we'll check that pattern out.
it's, it's not the prettiest pattern ever. Um, the pattern on the pinion looks good. You know, it's all the way top to bottom, but then again, it might be this paint. It's, you know, it's not the most consistent paint. Um, but, like I said, he, he didn't believe that it was making ring gear noise before. So, it's really hard to say. There, there's no telling until he gets it back in the car and now that it's not going to be making bearing noise. But, I'm pretty sure this pattern is acceptable. It's just not the prettiest pattern. I think they have it. One like this. Where it's high on the coast and low on the hill. Because you have a coast side, a drive side, and a toe side, and a heel side. Yeah, so it'd be this one right here. Acceptable patterns on the coast side, down on the toe, and on the drive side, it's up on the heel. Actually, it would be this one here. So that pattern's down here on the bottom. And you go up and look at the coast side. It's way up on the top on the heel. So, he should be good to go. And that's how I set up a Ford 8.8 .8 differential. You know, of course, you got to throw the axles back in it, C clips, cross pin. Um, but I think the customer is actually going to put his own axles in. He's going to do axle bearings and seals too, so I'm not even going to put the axles back in it. Um, I probably will put the cross pin back in and stuff, you know, just so I don't give it to him in a bag. But that's it. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you like and subscribe. Till next time.